वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ विद सिनास पॉडकास्ट सीरीज आई एम योर होस्ट हितवी शाह एंड टुडे वी आर डाइविंग इनटू एन इनक्रेडिबली फैसिनेटिंग एंड इवॉल्विंग टॉपिक व्हिच इज डायबिटीज रिमिशन वी ऑफन हियर अबाउट मैनेजिंग डायबिटीज बट कैन इट बी एक्चुअली रिवर्स्ड और शुड वी से पुट इनटू रिमिशन एंड टू अनपैक दिस वी हैव विद अस डॉक्टर रवि शाह a distinguished endocrinologist with a stellar academic background including a dm in endocrinology from pgi mer chandigarh and the prestigious mrcp uk sce in endocrinology his research contributions and clinical expertise in diabetes obesity thyroid disorders and hormonal health making the perfect expert to guide us through this discussion today so dr ravi thank you for joining us today and welcome to the show thank you thank you very much for having me looking forward to an exciting discussion say like guys doctor so doctor to, uh, to start with could you just share insights into your clinical experience with um, diabetes remission and what initially drew your interest to this area yeah sure so uh, actually diabetes remission has come into vogue very recently but it is not as such a very new topic so mm-hmm. the research on it has been going on from around 2010 2011 and then recently uh, what has come is that in 15 years of research there has been very good results so that is why now it is all about even with diabetes and this we have uh, been uh, taking the patients to counseling for diabetes remission at and also continuing the same in my clinical practice as well the response has been very good for almost for the patients who have been recently diagnosed with diabetes it is a very good option and like, all the patients have that ready that whether they will be on the medications for uh, their entire life or not so now this properly counseled they have to be out of it Yeah, that's really interesting, doctor. Uh, now, doctor, the term remission is often preferred um, over reversal when discussing diabetes. So, why is that? And should remission be a mainstream treatment goal, or is it just uh, more of an exception than the rule? Right. So, coming on to the first part of the question of between reversal and remission. Mm-hmm. So initially, the term which uh, everyone was using was diabetes reversal. A lot of influencers are also using the term reversal mm-hmm. but uh, scientifically that term is not correct the main reason is that uh, this reversal of diabetes that is to lifestyle change and if we do not continue to have that same lifestyle underlying risk of insulin resistance insulin defect that is thing if we do not continue those lifestyle changes life long diabetes can again come back So the diabetes reversal is not permanent. Is the term remission has been a term they have used from uh, like other terms like cancer and everything. Where if you continue to be on uh, the same lifestyle, if you continue to keep your weight within reach, you will continue to not have diabetes. But if again you fall back onto your previous lifestyle, you again start eating a lot of fat and your weight gain of weight. So you will again have the diabetes. That is why yeah. the term remission is used. And uh, for all the newly diagnosed or recently diagnosed diabetes who have been diagnosed with type two diabetes in mm. the past five years, definitely it should be a mainstream goal. So if you are a long-standing diabetic in which you have been diabetic for more than five years, your diabetes is unlikely to reverse. If you are a type two diabetic. the definitely diabetes can reverse and it should be a mainstream goal which should be offered to each and every diabetic individual yeah i think that perspective actually helps clarify the distinction also mm-hmm. uh not just speaking of conditions what patient characteristics like you know bmi diabetes duration or metabolic profile make someone um an ideal candidate for remission and are there any um, red flags that suggest remission might not be achievable So now, what are the patient characteristics? So first thing is the type of diabetes. So there are various types of diabetes. Broadly dividing them, the two most common types of diabetes are type two diabetes and type three. Type two diabetes generally happens in younger individuals, generally in children or adolescents. And uh, the 
basic pathophysiology happening in the they have deficiency of insulin so that type of diabetes is not likely to be so the reversible type of diabetes is type 2 diabetes which is actually about the age of and the basic mechanism in that type of diabetes mm-hmm. is insulin resistance so insulin is there but because of body fat that insulin is not able to work if you reduce the body fat then that insulin will again start working and then you won't have diabetes the first characteristic is that the patient should be type 2 diabetes second thing is that the patient should be recently diagnosed if the diabetes is diagnosed in the past two to five years so if the patient comes to us and he is within five years of diabetes diagnosis then that patient is likely to go into remission beyond five years the pancreas uh, does not have that capacity to reverse to go back to the normal state so unlikely to reverse after five years of diabetes uh, the third thing is uh, those patients who are obese so who have like, more weight get diagnosis and whose bmi is about 27.5 they are likely to go into remission and those whose bmi is on the lower side they don't have enough body fat so uh, that is the uh, so the reason is unlikely to be just because of body fat so just reduction in body fat is those who have higher body fat by reducing their body fat they can reduce so generally the bmi of the and then the fourth difference is that we generally do for our are some laboratory investigation which will give you the capacity of your pancreas so the most common test for that is c-peptide so we look for the c-peptide level if the c-peptide levels are normal that means that the pancreas can regenerate it as a good and then there is still scope that the, uh, the diabetes emission can because the pancreas is so these are the characteristics that we look for the red flag signs are the complete opposite so type 1 diabetes they are the ones who are unlikely to have uh, remission of diabetes those who see that their values are lower it was already bmi is lower so their body fat is already low so uh, like further reduction in body fat is unlikely to help them and those who are diabetic for 10 years 20 years so their diabetes is so long that their pancreas capacity is likely has reduced so unlikely that they will undergo this so these are the red factors that are likely to undergo this Yeah, so there are like various factors that play a major role when considering remission. I think. Uh, so now, like the diet uh, debate is ongoing for diabetes, and we like diet like VLCD, low carb, or intermittent fasting. So, if you had to pick one approach with the strongest long term evidence, which would it be, and why? And beyond diet, how crucial are lifestyle factors like sleep in maintaining remission? so now coming on to the first part of the question that is diet so uh, basically we are causing remission through weight loss and if we look at the broad characteristics because in the 20% is completed that is the predominant even if we look if you walk for one day it doesn't really matter it's almost equivalent to just one day. So, like walking for so long, you still burn the calories that is that you could have uh, like uh, not got only if you had eaten one butter roti less. Okay, so diet is the predominant role, and so now what kind of diet should be taken? So all the meta analysis have shown that what you need to uh, worry about is the calorie content of the diet. If the calorie content is lesser than your body requirement by five hundred. Calories, but going to lose beyond that, the macros they have not shown any specific evidence as to any specific type of diet is going to be for the beneficial. So uh, you have to take a low calorie diet. But low calories could be 800 to 1500 based on your height, your weight, in your body type, and whatever work you are doing, and your body weight. Beyond that, whether you are taking high protein or not. Whether you are taking a keto diet or not, whether you are taking a Mediterranean diet or not, none of that is going to matter. So you just need to cut down on your calories. And that is the uh, one which has the evidence. Now looking at the other lifestyle, 
for other lifestyle factors in looking at terms of exercises please 20 minutes per day of exercise moderate intensity aerobic exercise is needed for weight loss so that you can consider as 15 minutes of walking in the morning now then uh, smoking and alcohol should be completely avoided and the last part that is sleep so now sleep is emerging as a very important uh, role in terms of control of diabetes and loss of weight so 6 to 9 hours of regular sleep in that early to bed and early to rise has more advantages compared to going day to bed and rising day to bed. and the sleep should be good quality and interrupted so these are the characteristics of Tips of sleep, which is required uh, for good control of diabetes and for weight. So these are the lifestyle and dietary tips which we need to do for weight loss and diabetes. Yeah, I think it's fascinating to know like how diet plays a major role and also overall lifestyle like sleep also matters a lot. So now, Dr. Beyond lifestyle, also medications like uh, GLP-1 receptors, uh, receptor agonists, or SGL-2 inhibitors are now being explored for diabetes remission. So, do you think we are moving toward a future where remission is driven as much by medication as lifestyle uh, interventions? Yeah. So now we have very very good medication options available for weight loss, and now they have uh, like evidence for almost twenty years. So these clinical analogs. Uh, like they got the first years of an analog still into the market from 1999 to 2000. The evidence is now very good. Uh, but still, what I advise to most of my patients is that they try to use medication to not get And at the end point of that treatment is still not very, very good. So, for all my patients, what I advise is that you go with the lifestyle changes first, you go with the dietary changes. And then uh, 60 to 70 percent of the patients are able to be benefited by just the dietary and lifestyle. For the rest, 30 to 40 percent of the patients who have uh, like other significant uh, reasons or who cannot follow the dietary plans well, for them, these medications are a really good option. And in them, these medications are very well indicated. So, like. Uh, recently, this month, we have new drug has come into the Indian market by the name of Tanzapetide, Miraglutide and Semaglutide, who have been in the Indian market for a few years. So, these are the three medications which are treatment options in our armamentarium for diabetes remission, and they have very good response. Tanzapetide has diabetes remission, almost 40 to 50 percentage, and Miraglutide and Semaglutide have good. Uh, diabetes uh, remission response as well. But still, uh, what I would consider is that your baseline has to be good diet, good lifestyle, and on them, if you cannot follow, or if you do not have enough advantage with just diabetes, like diet and lifestyle, then these medications are an excellent thing. Yeah, I think that's uh, something uh, rightly mentioned and a compelling thought also. And I think also a hybrid approach is the way forward where you, uh, along with the medications, you also focus on lifestyle changes as well. That's really interesting. Yeah, so it has to be it has to be a complete approach in that yeah. your diet has to be correct, your lifestyle has to be correct, mm -hmm. your sleep has to be correct. And then, of course, medications, they have their own role as well. But the medications, have to be added on the base of the good life. Correct, that's right. He mentioned, Doctor. Uh, now, as we wrap up today's session, Doctor, thank you so much for the, such an insightful discussion and thank you for sharing your expertise and shedding light on the evolving la landscape of uh, diabetes dimension. So, thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, thank you very much for having me. And I hope that, like your program, like Med Synapse, there are more programs who uh, get involved in patient education. And like I hope medicine has been reach as Thank you so much, Doctor. And to our listeners, if you found this conversation valuable, remember that if you're a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions, do not hesitate to join us on the Medicine Apps platform. Medicine Apps platform is not just a resource, it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers, participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. Until next time, stay involved, stay informed and take care. Thank you.